Normal body habits shapes are going to fit just fine on that 14 by 17 cassette. But once again, if they're a little bit smaller, you want to go ahead and bring that collimation down slightly just for radiation, radiation protection purposes and also to optimize your image quality wise. Now, when it says the opposite dimensions are used for crosswise, I did mention that we do crosswise cassette on certain types of patients. And what were those certain types of patients? Broader patients. So your hypersthenic body habitus and most of your male patients. Most of your male patients will fit better on a crosswise cassette versus lengthwise cassette. Keep that in mind. And vertical dimension may be less for the smaller patients. That's how much your pediatrics. Of course, core is going to collimate down the size of their little chest. Make sure we're not overexposing them. If this is staying with chest x rays, all are going to use the same build size. And some adults, once again, that being that 14 by 17 cassette for your chest x rays. All right, once again, guys, upright. I put that in bold red because that's very important. We are gonna to prefer to have the patient stand upright for a PA chest or seated upright. Why, once again? Because we wanna demonstrate those air fluid levels if there are any in the patients. Also, aside from fluid and air levels, the upright position allows the diaphragm to move to its lowest position when we're breathing in. We want to be as relaxed as possible it's easier to relax the diaphragm and get a full inspiration when we're standing up or upright versus lying down. Imagine if you're sick and you're lying flat on your back, it can be hard to breathe in really deep. Versus if we're sitting up, it's just going to naturally allow the body to allow those lungs to expand a lot better and relax that diaphragm. Now, I put this in bold red because it's been a very important point. We do center to T7, but we also want to make sure, aside from centering to T7, at the top of our IR that's light filled, is one and a half to two inches above the shoulder. So a way to double check ourselves and make sure that we are centering that properly. That also allows room for our markers to get optimal marker placement. One and a half to two inches above the shoulders. Now this is a picture in your book. I do feel like this patient's head's back too much because that's actually gonna show up in the x-ray. You're gonna see the occipital bone. So even though we gotta bring the chin up, I wouldn't bring the chin back that far with that picture personally. I'm sure Mr. Fung's told some of y'all that. Yes? And two inches is usually three fingers, right? It depends on the person. Like for me, it's three fingers, but some people have larger fingers than others. You know, measure it. Measure what your two inches are with your fingers. And it's three fingers instead of two inches, right? Depends on the person. Oh. So measure yourself. Yeah. All right, so we're positioning the patient. We're going to have the patient face the IR or the vertical grid device, because why we're doing PHS, which talking about the path of beam means posterior to anterior. Therefore, we're going to face the IR for a PA position. We're also going to put our MSP centered perpendicular to the IR. Now, very important, we want to make sure the weight is equally distributed on both feet. You'll have patients where they'll put all their weight on one right side or one left side. What's going to happen if I'm standing for a PHS and I stand like this? I see my shoulders tilted. It's going to tilt my body to the right. It's not going to be a nice looking x ray. Make sure that they have their feet equally distributed, and ideally, you want to put the feet at shoulder width. Shoulder width. It's also for stabilization of the patient so they don't get weak and fall over. If they're standing like this, have you ever stood like this for a long time and locked your knees? Uh -huh. You ever seen someone pass out from locking mm -hmm. their knees? Make sure you have those feet spread equally distributed. Make sure they're kind of bending their knees, not locking their knees, because people are weak, get in the hospital, they're sick. Keep a close eye on them. Also, flex the elbows, rest the back of the hands, low on the hips. I call it the chicken wing. Make them do the chicken wing. Don't tell them to do the chicken wing. They don't look at you crazy. But imagine like chicken wings, you want those hands on the hips, the backs of your hands, that dorsal surface touching your hips. And then bring those shoulders forward. Very important. Also, as much as you can, depress the shoulders. We don't want them to scrunch the shoulders up. We want them relaxed. And we're gonna roll the shoulders forward. It's a lot that we're doing. Hands on the hip, relax shoulders, shoulders forward. Now, what's the purpose of rolling the shoulders forward? Did y'all talk about it in the lab? Yeah. To, move the to move the scapulae out of the way. Okay. Scapula, singular scapulae oh, yeah, is plural. We wanna move the scapulae out the lung fills. We achieve that by rolling the shoulders forward. I would remember this, because probably when it comes to positioning on chest x-rays, that's what people forget to do the most, is roll those shoulders forward. But we gotta do that to get those scapulae out of the way. 
There's a lot to it. Um, and in some cases, you know, some of your hospitals will have little bars on the sides of the IR. You have your patients grab the bars. It does the same action. It rolls the shoulders out of the way and gets them in a nice position for a chest X-ray. But if you do not have bars, you want to be like, just like this picture right here. Yeah, it's not, this is always going to be the more optimal way, but like if you have like a really weak patient, like a granny or grandpa, and they're just barely standing up, it'd be a good idea to help them hold on to something. So, still gives you a pretty good image, but yes, he's right, that would be your optimal way of doing the x-ray. Yes, ma'am. So if you happen to have granny or grandpa, and they come in a wheelchair, do you um, and they are able to stay, will you still at least have the wheelchair locked behind them just in case? Or Yes, you would. Okay. Yes, you would. Very good thing to bring up. So they'll just fall on you randomly. Okay. Have people just fall flat on their back, straight forward. They'll just fall out on you. They get weak. Central ray. Central ray will be a perpendicular central ray. It means we're not at an angle. It's a straight shot, straight through T7. T7 is our centering point for our PA chest. Remember that, put a big star on it. Now, how do we locate T7, guys? How have y'all been doing in the lab? It's from the jetty. From the C7. With your pinky, thumb is where T7 is, right? Make sure you're spreading those fingers. Don't do this. Look, that's a big difference in distance. Make sure you spread those fingers properly if you're using that method. Now, if you did not use that method, what's an alternative way to find T7? Did y'all talk about it? <laughs> For an AP, yes, but if we're still in a PA. Not exactly the axilla, but the inferior angles of the scapula. You can palpate the inferior angles of the scapula on your patient. They're back here. So the scapula comes to a sharp end right here. You can palpate those on your patient. That also lines up with T7. It's an alternative way to find T7 if for some reason you're not going to use this method. But that tends to be the best way overall. We can use a pencil. You want to. Yeah, you can. Now exposure should always be made when, guys? At the end of our second keyword, deep inspiration. Second deep inspiration. It must be a deep inspiration, not just a regular inspiration. We want to fully inflate those lungs for our PA chest. Now, if we've done everything correctly, we're going to go over what's called the evaluation criteria. What should that x-ray image look like? Well, we want evidence of proper collimation if needed. We want the entire lung fields from the apices to the costophoric angles on that PA chest. Why? Because we're looking at the entirety of the lungs. If either of those points are cut off on an x-ray, we need to repeat that x-ray to make sure we're including all that anatomy. You'll see text sending x-rays where the angles are cut off. You'll say, oh, that's good enough. No, that is not good enough. You could be missing something critical that's showing up only in those angles. Always ensure that you have the apices all the way to the costal angles before you send that to the radiologist. Now, don't tell that to your tech. They can do their own thing. They'll say, hey, you can't send that. They're probably gonna get upset at you. But keep in mind, when I become a tech, I have to include all the lungs on that x-ray. That is very important. No rotation. How do we determine there's no rotation? Well, we look at the clavicles. Are our clavicles equidistant, which means they're equal on both sides, from our spine or vertebral column? We also want to see the trachea visible in the midline. We want air in that trachea, preferably. And then we want equal distance from the vertebral column to the lateral border of the ribs on each side. We want those ribs to look like the same size on each side. We want the lungs to look like the same size. And I'll show you when you look at an oblique, we actually stretch the lung out on the side we're looking at. For PA, we want them to be the exact same size. Also the rib cage to be the same size to ensure that they are in a true PA and not rotated. Rotation is also a very common issue of which causes a lot of repeats on chest x-rays. Patient might shift their weight on you. They may, be, may, may not be sitting up straight. Rotation can occur. In a lot of ways, especially on your babies and pediatrics, let me tell you. Yes. Pediatrics are notoriously always rotated or very easy to rotate on chest x ray. Typically, yes. It's considered a special life modality. It's not like formally recognized as one, but people recognize it as one. It's a whole different world. All right. Yes. Can we do a PA and we have to see the trachea? It could be in, like, does that have to be in the 
like it should, be, doing it it should be air filled, yes. Okay. That's, that's basically the only way you can actually visualize it if it has air in it. Okay. All right, more evaluation criteria, guys. We want proper shoulder rotation. How do we ensure that they rotate the shoulders forward if those scapulae are outside the lung field as much as possible? If we see scapulae in the lung field, that means the patient did not rotate the shoulders forward. Also, proper inspiration. What do you want to see, guys? 10 ribs visible above the diaphragm. Get used to counting those ribs. We're gonna, I'm going to have some questions on your test where I'll show you a chest x-ray, and you'll need to learn how to count those ribs and tell me if that's a good or bad PA chest based on how many ribs you see in the lung field. Sharp outlines of the heart and the diaphragm. Faint shadows of the ribs visible through the heart shadow and lung markings visible from the hilum to the periphery of the lungs. So it's just saying, it's a fancy way of saying we want to see all the lungs on that x-ray, the entirety of the lungs. The ones in red are going to be the ones you're asked the most about. There's a lot of stuff we got to go through our head before we send an image to make sure it's a good optimal image. You're going to see some people, once again, that don't care, but you have people that do care because their reputation is on the line and they want to advance in this career field. Quality does matter and people do notice good versus shoddy work. It's like you go to a high-end restaurant expecting good food versus you go to a cheaper restaurant, it's not so good food. Or you look at Chef Ramsay with his high standards when he throws people out of the kitchen. <laughs> That's how I feel whenever I see bad x-rays. I'm going to throw you out of the x-ray room. Quality really <coughs> does matter, guys. It really does. Can, can you go back? Yeah. One, one more slide. What's the evidence of proper collimation? Evidence of proper collimation, usually you can see a faint white border around the x-ray. Let me see if I can show you here. So this one may have actually have it cropped off, but evidence of collimation will look like a little white glow around the image. I think I have an example somewhere here to show you. They crop these so you can't see it. But evidence of collimation is indicative, in, indicated by a little faint white glow around your image. So, look at these side by side, guys. On the right, we have a chest x-ray that has some nice numbers on it. Don't get used to that. That's just for demo. But, let's look at the image on the left. Would you say it's an optimal image, yes or no? Based on the criteria we just went over. Image over here. No. Let's count together, first of all. First thing we're going to do is count the ribs. Let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, Nine, ten. We can all count to ten, yes. But is that in the lung field? Yes, it is. Yes. It's partially in the lung field. Therefore, have we achieved inflated lungs? Yes. Yes. Yes, we have. It just has to be partially in the lung field, not fully. Now, what else have we talked about? Rotation. Does anybody see rotation on that x ray? Does it look pretty equal? It looks fairly equal. We look at the clavicles, they're fairly equal. We look at the size of the lungs, they also look like they're about the same size. Do we see the heart shadow? Yes, we do. Is there anything missing on that x ray? No marker. There's no marker, and the trachea is also not visualized. Now, would this be repeatable? No, it would not. Not for most texts. Even though ideally we would want to see the trachea, the star of the show will always remain the lungs on a chest x-ray. That's the main thing we're focused on. Yes. Even, even if we're missing like possible uh, anatomy or anything like that? Yes. The main star of the show is going to be those lungs. If those angles were cut off, we'd need to repeat it. Let's look at this image on the right. We do have a marker. We do have 10 ribs. Is that optimal? Are we missing anything on this x-ray? Mm. Can you see the C, C down here, this one? Um, Why is are they, they rotated? They are very slightly rotated. Look at the clavicles over here, which is the clavicles here. Mm -hmm. This clavicle is a little bit further to the right. This one's going slightly over the spine. They are very slightly rotated. This would not be repeatable. Mm -hmm. It's not enough of a difference that it would be a bad image, but not an optimal image. We also very, very closely very almost cut off the lung there but it is barely on there. Mm -hmm. So we'd still send this, but we always look for ways as we become technologists to optimize our images. What can I do better? Because I don't care what anyone tells you, 
There's no such thing as a perfect image. We can always do better. We can always raise the bar for ourselves. Keep that in your head. Because you'll hear Chuck say, that's the best image ever in the world. You should frame that on a wall. They're just blowing smoke up their rear end. Don't listen to that. <laughs> no one can do a perfect image. There's no such thing. But what we do is artwork, and we always want to make it the best art possible and raise the bar for ourselves. That's the importance of our evaluation criteria, that we're optimizing every image that we send to those doctors. Anatomy. Here's a great picture, guys. This is in your book of a lot of the anatomy you'll need to label on your exam next week. This is a PHS. We have our air filtrachia, our apices, our aortic arch, of course, our lung. What's that area with the little branches called? Y'all remember? Hylar. Hylar region. It's not labeled, but make sure you remember that. Hylar region. We heart or heart shadow. Remember, I don't like you calling it diaphragm. What do I like you to call that area? The base. The base. The base. And then our costoferent angle. Great demo image of what to expect to label in your exam. Why does that other image look so fuzzy? Why does it look fuzzy? Yeah, like little shapes. I don't know. It looks different. Look at the TV screens. More HD. It's just a bad transfer in your picture. Oh, they do have some, well, they got some nodules in there. They got some pathology. That might be TV. Uh, did the last image is, have a TB as well? Because there was a sharp like yeah, on the... No, this right here? Mm -hmm. That's calcification. That's calcification. Good eye, though. For the uh, aortic arch, is it, is it okay to call it the cardiac notch? No, that's a different area. Okay. A cardiac notch refers to an area on the heart, close to the heart. It's the aortic arch is the aorta itself above the heart, curving. Mm -hmm. Oh. So be careful. All right, let's talk about our lateral chest, guys. Once again, lateral chest, preferred upright if possible, but we can do it lying down if the patient cannot stand, but preferably upright. Why do we prefer upright chest x-rays? To see the level of the blood fluid, fluid levels. and the air. Fluid levels. Also the air you said, sir? Only the fluid. Fluid levels, yes, fluid levels. The same reason that stand for a PA. Now, when it comes to lateral chest, we always want to put the side place closer to the IR, um, the side of worry. So let's say the patient's having issues with the right lung. We want to put their right side next to the IR. If they're having issues with the left lung, we want to put their left side close to the IR. But in general, if it is not indicated, you will always perform a left lateral chest. I'll say again, if it's not indicated otherwise, you will always default to a left lateral chest. The doctor will specifically request a right lateral. Or if the patient is physically unable to turn on their left side, you can do a right lateral for an alternative. Now, why is a left lateral a default? Because it's gonna minimize the heart magnification the most. Where's our heart located? Oh, on the right side, not the middle of our chest. It's actually more on the right side, on, on the left side. Yeah. Therefore, we're gonna put our left side against the IR to reduce that magnification as much as possible. Now, same as for a PA. Top of the IR, one and a half to two inches above the shoulders. Same principle, same centering. When you center for a PA chest, your centering is the same for your lateral. Your collimation should be about the same because you want that two and a half, on the one and a half to two inches above the shoulders. Light build. Photoshop. Uh, the guy with the plastic face. <clears throat> this is a little bit human to me. <laughs> Just showing you that position, guys. Upright, always preferred. Keep in mind, guys, most of your patients are not going to be a nice slender build like this. You're going to have patients of all shapes and sizes, so you got to adjust accordingly to make sure you're centered properly if you have good collimation or no collimation. If they're too large to fit within that collimated build. One thing I want you to make note of when it comes to a lateral, make sure that your marker is on the anterior side. Some people will put it back here, but you want that marker in front of the patient. Very important for laterals. So for a hypersthenic patient, would you still do the cross legs? Good question. For a hypersthenic patient, so for, for PAs crosswise, so I said males and PA, I'm sorry, males and hypersthenic patients really go to a crosswise cassette orientation. Mm -hmm. For all laterals, no matter the body habits or gender, it's always going to be lengthwise. Great point to bring up. I didn't mention that. All of your laterals are preferably done 
lengthwise, no matter what the patient size is or gender. Now, positioning wise, we want to achieve a true lateral position. How did y'all learn to do a true lateral position in lab? Your hands? Make sure they're in a nice true lateral. Make sure that MSP is parallel with the IR. MCP is going to be perpendicular to the IR. Make sure you make note of that because that is inverse of what you just wrote for your PHS. MSP is parallel. MCP is perpendicular. Shoulder should be in contact with the grid or the IR to reduce that OID as much as possible. Notice it says shoulder, not body. If we put the whole body against the side of the um, IR, they're going to be leaning like this. We just want the shoulder. There's still going to be a little bit OID, but they're still as close as possible and still in a true lateral. Extend the arms over the head, flex the elbows, and rest the forearms on the, on the head. This is the preferred method like this guy's doing right here. And I say that because if you tell a person to raise their hands, what they'll often do is this right here. If my arms are like this, are my arms completely on my lung fill? Probably not. So this tissue is going to be in the lungs. If I have my arms up like this, they're much more up and out of the way. So be careful on that. Um, as one of my seniors brought up and still lasts up to this day, Charlie might remember this, about the arm fat. Mm -hmm. yeah. They said people's arm fat get in the way. They do. Most people have tissue that hangs down and that arm tissue is going to get in the lung fill. So we want them on top of the head to make sure it's not obscuring the apices of those lungs. Um, if the patient's not mobile enough, we can provide them an IV to hold on to, or some of them will have bars, like y'all saw in lab, there's a little bar they can hold on to as well. Make sure they're not leaning sideways or bending forward. They want to be straight up like this picture, with just the shoulder in contact with the IR. Now there is a little trick, and I can show you guys in lab later if you remember, I call it the shadow trick for laterals, because I don't like using the hands, I like it's a little unreliable, even though we teach you to do the hand. If you look at the patient's back in a lateral, if their back is entirely covered in shadow, usually they're in a true lateral. If you see any light on their back, they're oblique. Does that make sense? Caught the shadow trick. A little way you can double check yourself. And I can demonstrate that later if y'all want me to. All right, so your CR will be a perpendicular central ray. It's going to enter on the MCP, once again, at the level of T7. And just like every other chest X-ray, guys, second deep inspiration is critical to inflate those lungs properly. So the grid is uh, in, in front of the IR, like between the patient and the IR, but Correct. which portion is the grid, well, sir? The grid is actually within the IR. Grid is the border of the IR? The grid is inside this. Like, you can't really see, but this is very thick. Inside that device, the grid is found behind there. Yeah. You can't really see it. Look at our evaluation criteria for the lateral chest. Once again, evidence of proper collimation. If they're very skinny, just like the picture there, like this guy, we don't want that wide open with all that extra light. We want to collimate down to his body shape for protection and quality purposes. Arms or soft tissues not overlapping the superior lung fill. We want those arms up and out of the way as much as possible. If the patient is physically unable to get their arms up high enough, what we're going to do, document that on our paperwork so the doctor knows that we tried. Cosophrenic angles in the lower apices of the lungs. So once again, just like a PHS, we want the entirety of those lungs on that X-ray apices to cosophrenic angles. If I'm clipping either, I need to repeat that chest X-ray, that lateral chest. High lung, hyalur area, the little branches should be at the center of our radiograph. And superimposition of the posterior ribs to the vertebral column. I'll show you what that looks like on the next picture here. Superimposition of the ribs posterior to the vertebral column. That's how we check for rotation on the lateral chest. We look for ribs, posterior ribs in particular. So hyalum's a fancy way of saying the bronchioles. They're the same thing. On X-ray, it's the hyalur region. On a diagram, it's the bronchi, tertiary, secondary, all that stuff. But we still need to know both. Know both. 
Yes. Or X-ray, you're saying hilar region. On a diagram, you're actually going to say bronchus, bronchi, primary, okay. secondary, all that stuff. Yes. Oh, go back. Yes. check for rotation is to make sure the sternum is not rotated. Not as reliable as the posterior ribs, but it's another option. Now what else do we want to see? This is not quite as important. I don't have this high read for you, but there's other things that we want to see on the lateral chest. Good to know. Long axis of the lung field showing left vertical position without forward and backward leaning. Once again, true lateral. You don't want the patient tilted back. You don't want them tilted forward. We're in a nice straight vertical position. Open thoracic and vertebral spaces. I'll show what that looks like in a second. We want those vertebrae to be nice and square shaped with ample spaces between them. If there's no spaces between the vertebrae, that tells us the patient has leaned into the actual IR. They're not in a straight up true lateral position. Penetration of our lung fields and heart. Of course, we have to penetrate those to visualize them on the x-ray. Then nice sharp outlines of the heart and diaphragm. By the way, you know, we're not actually going to see the diaphragm. It's the actual base of the lungs. That's referring to having a proper technique set of our KP and mass that we penetrated with enough x-rays to give a nice detailed resolution of those anatomical parts on the x-ray. So once again, all good stuff to know, but what I've seen asked the most is those ones that I highlight in red for you. Criteria. Doesn't mean to not look at this either. Just have seen those more often. And of course, here we have it, guys. Let's look at this image on the left. Now, this is a little bit low quality. This picture did not transfer very well. But based on what I just talked about for evaluation criteria, do you think this is a nice, optimized chest x ray? Why not? Well, it is blurry, but that's more like, that's picture quality, it's not the actual x-ray. Do we have Do we have costoperative angles? We do. Are the apices on there? Yes, right here. How about the hilar region in the middle? Yes, do we see the heart shadow? Yes. How about the vertebrae? Do they have spaces between them? Yes. Yes. Posterior ribs. Are they superimposed? They actually are not. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. A little hard to see on this image. I have more demos later, but you see how there's a little space here versus this image over here where it's almost completely like a straight line. Y'all see the difference side by side? There's a little bit of space. Now, a general rule when you look at x ray of a lateral chest, you're going to put two fingers up on your lateral chest. If the rotation of the ribs is greater than your two fingers, this is a little bit blown up, so it's a bad way to show you, but on a computer screen. Two fingers, if that is beyond your two fingers, they're over rotated. And it needs to be repeated. You want this nice straight line with those ribs superimposed. It tells us that it's a true lateral, they are not rotated. Very important point to remember. Um, no marker. And like y'all keep saying, very bad quality. That's just that's a bad little picture. Over here, this is a great x-ray to look at, guys, of what kind of anatomy you need to label on an x-ray for your test next week. You have your apices, you've got your esophagus versus the trachea. Remember, trachea is in front of the esophagus. You'll see that little line dividing them right there. Mm -hmm. Sternum in the front, so your hilar region in the middle. Your posterior ribs, your T vertebrae, base, not diaphragm, and your costoferic angles. Really great image of what to expect to label next week. Right there. Right. It's in your book, or you can take a picture of it. Just a, just a quick question uh, on the ribs things for superimposition. Uh, can you show me again, kind of what you what you meant? Cole? Yeah, I think I have more. No, that's not, I don't like that picture here. I need to find a more high quality picture here, but this is really blown up, so I can't really show you the finger thing I'm talking okay. about. This would be more of like a computer screen. Mm -hmm. But when you put your fingers on the back behind the T vertebrae, these ribs, you see how they're kind of curving with this C shape? Correct. 
If I put my fingers down and these are curving outside my fingers, oh, okay. that means that patient's over rotated. Okay. If I go over here, I put my fingers up and those ribs are within my two fingers, they're in a nice true lab. Okay. Make a little more sense? Yep. So would that picture have been taken with this one? This is just a, I think it's a film x-ray. This is like a really old x-ray. It was like the one when I, when I was learning x-ray on my book. <laughs> okay, other questions, Shizu? Yes, yes, the, um, the, did you say that we would, in that we label it says diaphragm, but we must call that the base? Right, so I want y'all to cross that out of your book because the registry will not refer to that as diaphragm. Now I will say, if they give you a bunch of choices, like if, if they're pointing this in diaphragms that only answer that makes sense, you would choose that. But they're more often going to use the word base. Because the diaphragm is actually invisible on x-ray. This is actually the most inferior border of the lungs, which is actually called the base. So, you know, no both, no both. But if I'm saying base, mark the base right there. But if the only choice is diaphragm, that would still be technically correct. So I'll make sure that's clear. Does that make sense how I said that? Yes, yeah. yeah. sir. Okay. Would you, would you put a, a pose a test question to be like, which is the best answer, and then it has both diaphragm and base? Only if I'm feeling particularly evil that day. <laughs> I mean, you've already kind of warned us. <laughs> oh, what? <laughs> no, I'm not, I'm not going to do that. No, that'd be, that'd be kind of cool. Like it's base, like base. Okay, but what about Mr. Paul? <laughs> He's not going to do that. Okay. <laughs> All right, look at, look at these two this side by side. We have a PA and a lateral. This is a typical chest series. Two view chest. This is what you'll do the most of in your career as an x-ray tech. Now, I want you all to look closely because we've got a very clear pathology on those images. Does anybody know what I'm referring to? Breast, Breast cancer. cancer. Breast cancer. No, <laughs> it looks like she has had part of her... Mm -hmm. Uh, breast removed yeah. on the. I see that. Oh, that's normal. I think oh, the, the collapse of the collapse lungs, lungs. Uh, collapse of the right lung. Good, good answer. Huh? Collapse of yeah. the. You're on the right track. Not a collapse. Lip. You're on the right track, though. It's fluid? It's filled with fluid. Oh. Now, I want y'all to get used to looking at this. Y'all see a straight okay. line right here? Mm -hmm. And y'all see a straight line right here? Mm -hmm. That tells us the patient is erect because what does fluid do? Makes it solves with gravity. Mm -hmm. So that's all the fluid sitting down at the bottom of the lung. It makes a straight horizontal line. Oh. So that's why, once again, we want to do erect chest x-rays, preferably. If we were laying on our back, what's that fluid going to do? It's going to fall all over that lung. Make sense? Mm -hmm. That's just showing you why that's the preferred position for a chest x-ray, to be upright, to visualize the fluid the best. Uh, there's a bunch over here as well, but this is so advanced you can't even see the line of it. Yeah. It's very filled up. But this shows you in our clear view of those ribs being curved, what I was talking about. Y'all see the space there? Mm -hmm. Preferably, I want those to be more superimposed, to be a true lateral. I want that to be a nice straight line, not this really advanced curvature. So if I was on a computer screen and those were outside my two fingers, I'd want to repeat that. But if they fit within my two fingers, it's okay to send. Your text will show you that in the clinic. You'll see them hold their fingers up the computer screen. They're checking the lateral nature of that chest, which is a true lateral. All right, everyone's favorite. Ooh, no. <laughs> oh, please, they're not that bad, guys. You're gonna get used to doing these. All right, once again, what's the preferred method? Upright, upright, standing or seated. Why, why, once again? For the fluid. level of the fluid. Fluid levels, that's right. Talk about IR is gonna be one and a half to two inches above the vertebral prominence. That terminology change from shoulder. For obliques, we're going one and a half to two inches above the vertebral prominence. Which is essentially right the same level as the shoulders, but it's a very subtle difference. For our patient positions, we're always gonna put them in a 45 degree oblique. When you see the word PA oblique, that's referring to our LAO and our RAO. Why? Because I'm facing the IR, PA refers to the projection, posterior to anterior, but I'm putting my right side against the IR or my left. Left side would be an LAO, right side would be an REO. Put a big star on this right here. You're going to get questions on this. For our PA oblique chest, once again talking about REO versus LAO, we are demonstrating the side of interest farthest from the IR. Or a simpler way of saying that, we're demonstrating the upside or the elevated side. Therefore, if I'm in an REO, 
Which lung am I visualizing? Left or right? Based on what that says. Right. No. Right. Close. Yeah. What's the elevated side? The side not touching the IR. Right. So I'm looking at my left lung in an REO position. I would write this down and make a chart. It would be something I would write before I take my test. We'll go through these individually. LEO will demonstrate the right lung. REO will demonstrate the left lung. Because for PA obliques, we're demonstrating the side that is up or elevated or furthest away from the IR. That's going to change and be inverse when we talk about the other oblique. So left and right. The LEO right. will show the right lung. The REO will show the left lung. Because what does the oblique do? It elongates the lung of interest. It stretches it out. Now our arms are going to be out of the radiation field. Wait to remember this for lab. The side of interest needs to be the arm that is up. The side that's not of interest is the arm that needs to be down. So, without moving my arms, based on what we know once again, I'm in an REO. Which lung is the star of the show? Left. Right. left. So where should my left arm go? Up. Uh, up. My right arm should be yeah. back. Now I'm in an LAO. Which lung is the star of the show? Right. So which arm should be up? Right. 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 Left arm yeah. behind. So wherever that, whatever that area of interest is we're being visualized, that arm needs to be out of the way. We're going to do the same thing for the other obliques, but remember it's going to be a little bit inverse of which lung we're looking at. So write those down. You can make yourself like a little square chart because we're going to talk about our LPOs and RPOs in a little bit as well. And that changes. Marker will always be placed on the side down. So even though I am visualizing my left lung, an REO, I'm still going to put a right marker because the side touching the IR is what you always mark. Okay? That's a very important aspect as well. People forget that fact. So if you're doing an LEO, you put a left, left marker. marker. But we're looking at the right lung. Mm -hmm. It's a little confusing. That's why I said it's good to make yourself a little chart on those obliques. What did you say about the um, elonging of the, uh, rib, the ribs? What did the lung. The, yeah, the, the lung. So whatever side, whatever the side of interest is on an oblique, that lung has been elongated or stretched out. So. In REO, I'm stretching out my left lung. That's why I'm oblique in the body. It stretches it out. <laughs> LEO, I'd be stretching out my right lung. Now, what's easy to remember on these is that they still have the same centering. It still enters at the level of T7. It's a perpendicular central ray. We're still doing the same breathing instructions, that being second full inspiration. Now, do you guys know how to center for these? Do we center towards the side that's down or the side that's up? In other words, if I'm like this in REO, where, does my central ray go towards the elevated side or the down side? The elevated side. Elevated side, correct. Now, I'll show you all a little trick for that. I don't know if you all learned this in the lab. Let's see, I need a demo person. Um, all right, come on, you're a volunteer. <laughs> Did he show you the method with your fingers and thumbs? Yes. yes. Okay. That's a great way to center properly. So, so Melody, it's the wall. I'm going to put you in an arm in position like this. I'm going to bring this arm up above your head, this arm behind you. I'm going to find her spine. I'll put one hand on her spine like this, other hand on the side of the body. Bring my thumbs together. That's exactly where I center. I'm not going to center on the spine like I did for the X, for the PA chest. Oblique, we have, the side, we have to always center towards the side that is up. No matter what oblique we do, you always center towards the elevated side. That's to compensate for the obliquity to make sure we don't cut anatomy off. So, hand on the spine, hand on the side, thumbs together, that's your centering point for an oblique. When you say the side, do you mean the Side MCP? of the body. Side of the body, MCP, yes. Spine, MCP, thumbs together. Easiest way to center for those. Don't try to eyeball it, because it's gonna throw you off. Thank you, Melanie, good job. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> Can you also set that uh, for positioning the IR, the central ray, well, the central ray for the IR, so that you use a P as well? It's a, PA, it's a PA projection, but the positions are REO and LEO. But you wouldn't move the two anymore, right? You no, you're still at T7. Okay. You're still at T7. That's not changing. All right, so for, eva for evaluation criteria, 
Once again, we always want evidence of proper collimation. I put this in bold because people forget this. Even though we're looking at one lung in particular, we still want to see both lungs in their entirety because one lung will be elongated, the other one will be what we call foreshortened. I'll show you what that looks like in a second. We still want that trachea filled with air. Got to have our markers. And which side do we mark on oblique? Side touching the IR. Side touching the IR. We want the heart and mediastinal structures within the lung field of the elevated side and oblique images of 45 degrees. Essentially, the heart needs to be appearing on the elevated side of that x-ray. And then maximum area of the right lung on an LEO. So you, what are we looking at? LEO, we're looking at the right lung. So we need to see the entirety of it. Maximum area means it's been stretched out. Maximum area of the left lung on the REO. So once again, make a chart, guys, on these obliques of what we're looking at, because I see people miss those questions more than anything else on this test. In regards to obliques, what are we looking at? What's the star of the show on that x-ray? What am I visualizing? What am I actually stretching out on that oblique? Is it to say that we look, when we're doing the LAO, we're looking at the, uh, like the lung side? The right lung. Oh, I see. Yes. Because mm -hmm. in the LAO position, the right side mm -hmm. is elevated. That means that right lung is stretching out. What it looks like right there, guys. So, this is a patient in the LEO position. How do I know that? What do I mark? Mm -hmm. The side that's down. Mm -hmm. So, if I'm looking at a PA oblique, if the left side's down, see what I'm talking about? It's an LAO. I'm marking the side that's touching the IR. So, in LAO, I'm elongating which side? The right side. Now, look at the difference. Here's the left lung, here's the right lung. See how much more stretched out it looks? Mm -hmm. The left lung is foreshortened, the right lung has elongated. That's why we oblique the chest, because the doctor wants to see a better analysis of the right lung. So we oblique the patient to stretch it out more so you can get a closer look at it. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Now we can still name our same anatomy, apex. What's that corner down there? Yeah. What about that Base. border? Base. What about this thing right here? The the shadow of the heart. Shadow of the heart. Uh, not very easy to see, but air filled structure here. Trachea. 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 I said you can see the sternum. Where do you see the sternum? I don't know. I'll just. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not yet. We're not to sternums yet. We have a specialized view for that. But there is a particular piece of anatomy I want to see if anyone can pick out in the x ray that is very obscure, but something we learned. Maneuvering. We talked about a little split off point. Oh, cool. oh, okay. Okay. Right. 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 You might write it for right on that image. Oh, it's right there. You see it? Yes. Mm -hmm. Y'all see it? Uh, There's the split. Oh, cool. There's the trachea, carina. Oh, okay. So this would be our right primary bronchus, left primary bronchus. Y'all see it? Oh, okay. Might be easier to see on the TV screens. Oh, yeah. On your obliques, you can usually see that carina a little bit easier. Okay. Can you point to it again, but from, from the other side? Like, can you go on the other side? Other side, my head's in the way? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This is a ghost. Yeah. See the split off point? So, pretty cool, huh? Mm -hmm. All right, that's showing you an esophagram. So, when we do esophagus studies, you often do obliques like this. But same thing, guys. We're in an LEO. See how that right side is very large and the left side is very thin? Same concept there. And that's showing you an REO. REO right there. So now the left side's elongated, the right side's foreshortened. So the right side's touching the IR, left side's elevated. Can you point to the AP? What is it, the AP? Apex, right up here. Okay. The Apex. And there's your carina again. Go back. To the LAO? Yes, because part of the criteria says you want the heart showing up in that area. Yes. Good observation. 
So she, she asks, is the heart in the elongated area? Yes, it is. That's part of the criteria for those obliques. All right, so what's the other ones, guys? The AP oblique chest. Do I have enough time? Oh, I got three minutes. I can't go into these yet. All right, so we will pick back up on this, guys. But really briefly, just to show you what I'm talking about, the AP obliques are going to be basically inverse what we just learned. We're now doing LPO and RPO. For LPO and RPO, we are elongating the side that's actually touching this time. So for an RPO, right lung stretched out. LPO, left lung stretched out. So once again, make yourself a chart on what's the start of the show. Each of those obliques is going to help you even for lab when you know what you're actually looking at. We'll pick back up on this on Monday and wrap up chapter three as well as do a review for your test on Friday. Any questions? Yes. For uh, LPO and RPO, the orientation of like anatomy is going to help us distinguish it from RAO and uh, LAO. Correct. We're getting all that. Yes. Yes. And the marker placement. Okay. So with yes. the LPO, we still centering at the uh, side that's up. For LPO, you was, yes, you are. Okay. You all, all every oblique you ever learned in radiology, you always center towards the side that's elevated. Period. It's a good point to bring up. All right, guys. Thank y'all. Hope you're enjoying learning. I've been a good class so far. We'll pick back up on Monday. So I'm out of breath. <laughs> <laughs> No, it's a lot for y'all enjoying what you're learning so far. Yeah. Yes. Hopefully interesting stuff. Yes. 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 Remember, take it seriously, guys, because we truly do artwork in x-ray. It's why I love x-ray. All the modalities out there have always loved x-ray the most because what we do is actual artwork. So the positioning and the actual images. It's medical art. <laughs> so be proud of what you do, be passionate. <laughs> so what is it? Do you just lay there? Huh? Like, so what is CT? You know what CT is? is? They lay there and you push a button. <laughs> <laughs> it's just so uninteresting to me. The images are pretty cool, but I don't know. I'll, I like the positioning aspect of the x-ray. I've got my CT certification, but I've never actually used it. It's because I love x-ray. That's so much. <laughs>